town with the great football team. We cheer the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, you may have seen Pokemon cards at the store, and you might have thought, hey, those are kind of cool, but I don't know anything about Pokemon. I want to go through the differences between the different cards that you'll find inside of a pack of Pokemon cards. The first type of card I want to talk about is what's known as an energy card. The thing I would suggest with this type of card is you want to be able to lot these up and sell a lot of them at once. That's the only way these move. So what I normally do is I'll take 10 of each type of energy and I'll lot them all together. Single energy cards are not worth anything unless you have any of the secret rares, which would be gold and four and shiny, which this is just a basic energy, not worth anything. The way to tell the difference is the basic Pokemons at the bottom of their card, as you can see there, there the circle on that card specifies that it is a common card. It's the least valuable of all the cards you can find minus, obviously, the energy. The next level up, you're going to see a lot of trainer cards, uh, which are the cards that, that most people would think aren't valuable, but there's actually a whole lot of value in trainer cards because playability-wise, they make your deck run smooth. So most of these trainer cards that are more popular uh, can run up to four of each copy in each deck. So trainer cards can be valuable especially any that are full art or secret rare trainer cards. You want to keep an eye out for those as well. Uh, the other kind of uncommon cards that would be in the same vein as a trainer. So a stage one Pokemon that is a middle evolution. It doesn't have very much value, but it's uncommon because it's not as common as the common cards. So uh, most of the uncommon cards don't have much value. The next kind of card that would come in a pack is what's known as a reverse holographic. So essentially what a reverse holographic card is, is it's, it's, it's a card that is completely holographic all over, except for the picture of the Pokemon. That's the only non-holographic part of the card. Reverse holographic rare cards can be more valuable than the holographic rare cards. So reverse holographics, definitely something you want to look for in your pack. Especially if you find one that's rare. D cards, or they're also known as EXs, GXs, Full Arts, Secret Rares, Rainbow Rares. Those are the big Mac Daddies that you really want to look for. And you can tell when you find those because they are glorious looking, guys. So hopefully this video brought some value to you and you're able to learn a little bit more about the different types of cards. There's plenty of sets out there or box sets or elite trainer boxes or what, what have you that actually will even come with EX, GX, Level B, all of these cards um, as promo cards. And when you can find these cards as promos, you want to pick them up because typically they're uh, decent, gradable candidates. Now, you do want to look because sometimes Pokemon miss packages some of their stuff. But the nice thing is I've dealt with Pokemon and showed the factory damage on it. And they were able to send me a new one when I reached out to them. So that's always an option you can do anytime you get damage in a pack of cards. The code cards. There's money in the code cards too, guys, as well. I'm going to give these two away. Uh, you guys can go ahead and redeem those for free play. So there's decent money that you can make selling the code cards too, especially to the more desirable sets. Now, there's some sets that you might be lucky to get 10 cents a piece for. There's some you'll get 50 cents a piece for. But if you're getting a booster box, then you're automatically going to get at least 36 of these code cards. So there's plenty of different ways to make money off of Pokemon cards, guys. And there's a lot of different opportunities in each pack. Uh, each pack does come with one rare card. You do have an option of getting either a hollow rare or a regular rare or even a ultra rare, which would be one of those B cards, EX, GX, ultra rare, secret rare, rainbow rare type cards. Um, the difference is you're going to notice that one card's a little bit thicker and it has an all green back. And then one card's a little bit thinner and it has a white back. You're getting at least a hollow rare in there. And the... Other ones that are green that are a little bit thicker signify that you're getting a 
non holo rare. If you're opening up a pack of cards and you see you get a white code card like this, that means you're getting something good. I appreciate you guys watching this, and until next time, may God bless.